Hey guys, today is Mickey Cabbage Rolls Day, and I'm pounding out the rice cauliflower, and I get the big bag from Costco. It comes in, I think four of these bags come, and it says to steam. <laughs> I don't know how long because I threw away the packaging. So, let's get this in the microwave. And I'm, I think I'll just microwave it probably, let's do two minutes and see how it is. It'll probably explode on me, but we shall see. Also on my stove, I have a pot of water, salted water boiling, and I have cored out the cabbage roll. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick that in there and I'm gonna let it kind of steep a little bit. Let's see if I can turn it around this way. I want it to steep so it's easy to peel the roll or the leaves off of the actual head of cabbage. I have a couple of cans of the diced tomatoes I think what I'll do is I'll take one and I'll blend it up real quick so it is so I get kind of a tomato uh, not paste but more of a tomato sauce so it's not so chunky I have that I have a pound of hamburger or ground beef I think it's 80 20 some seasonings I need to get my sauerkraut so oh also I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees and then we're gonna get ready for this stuff We'll get ready to throw this together. I added another 40 seconds to the rice cauliflower. I've also pulled out my um, sauerkraut. So you, if you don't have sauerkraut, you don't have to use it. Um, it's just something I like to add to mine. It gives it a nice flavor. All right, let's get the hamburger out of the package. The head of cabbage is boiling nicely over there. I also have a tea towel. The tea towel is to wring some of the water out of the cauliflower. Some of it is still frozen, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's cooked pretty good. So, go ahead and open up my tea towel. Here, let's move this other way. I'm going to be putting it in a uh, pie dish. So I'm going to set that over there for now. All right, here is my tea towel. There we go. You're going to want to squeeze out some of the water in this because you don't want your, your stuff to get really soupy. So, we're going to wrap this up. And we're going to squeeze some of the water out of this. Oh, it's crazy the amount of water that comes out of this, you guys. Look. You want it fairly dry. And that's my husband's uh, popcorn bowl there. I do miss popcorn, I will say that. Ah, so much water. Crazy amount of water. A lot has to do with it being frozen as well. All right. Woo, now my hands are freezing. <laughs> All right, so here is the cabbage over here. Let's see what we got here. We have one leaf that peeled off. I don't know if I'll use that one because sometimes the darker leaves are really like fibrous and it's hard to chew. There's another one peeling off right there. And you core it so you can pull from the, the stem parts right here as well. That one's not quite ready. That one is still kind of attached. Be careful, you don't burn yourself. There's another one. All right, this one I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over. See, there's another one coming off. I'm going to flip it over so it, it will boil closer to the stem and loosen that up. Sometimes you can peel it back from here. Oh, there's another one. I'll start pulling them out in a second to let them cool down so I'm able to mix them up. But in the meantime, let me turn this down a little. We're going to go ahead and get the mix going. Oh, the oven's ready. All right, let me set these off to the side. First, we're going to start off with some pepper. Do your salt and pepper to your taste. That might be too much, but it's okay. Uh, I also use the Italian seasoning, probably a couple teaspoons, and I do some 
garlic powder, not the garlic salt. We'll probably put you know, two teaspoons of that in there. All right, let's, ooh, it just went everywhere, guys. And it's gonna be stuck all over your towel, so let's get that in the sink. All right, let me take my rings off and let's get to mixing. Okay, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper. This time I'm gonna add a little bit of the pink Himalayan salt. And just a little bit more garlic. And a little bit more Italian seasoning. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. This is all mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and let the cabbage continue boiling so I can get some more leaves off it, and then we'll go ahead and start rolling. I'm going to take the remaining cabbage. Ooh, it's full of water. Take the remaining cabbage, and I'm gonna cut it up, and I'm going to do egg roll in a bowl. Um, Cause I don't know what else. I mean, I could do probably fry cabbage and bacon, but I think I prefer to have egg roll in a bowl. So now, I'm gonna let these leaves cool, and then I'm going to open the cans of tomatoes, one of which I will add some of the same seasonings that I added to the meat, to the uh, cans of tomatoes. Now, you don't have to use canned tomatoes. You can use a pre-made marinara sauce, a pre-made pizza sauce, a pre-made spaghetti sauce, Whatever is the lowest carbs or whatever you guys use. I always used rails, but I don't have any. So I'm going to throw together real quick a sort of marinara or spaghetti sauce. So I have the two cans of tomatoes opened up and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna throw this together. This is if you decide to um, do this with cans of tomatoes. If not, you just go ahead and skip forward and um, use your own spaghetti sauce or whatever, jarred marinara, whatever you use. So here we go. Let's hope I don't get anything on my white shirt. All right, so I have a bowl right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drain some of the water. Let me move your bag. Some of the water into this bowl, or water, some of the juice rather, into this bowl. And in my little Oscar thingy here, I'm just going ahead and dump the tomatoes in there. It will probably overflow because that's a lot of tomatoes. But it's okay. In this, I am going to add some pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, because what I'm also going to do is add some minced garlic, and some more of the Italian seasoning. I mean, do this to your taste, guys. I'm just eyeballing it. I have some of the minced garlic here. I'm going to squeeze probably, that's uh, about a tablespoon and instead of regular salt I am going to be using some seasoning salt be very sparing with this because this does have carbohydrates and watch this overflow <laughs> so hang on guys Oh, that smells amazing. So here's the result of this, you guys. We're going to go ahead and add this right to the juice from the can. Let's add some, you know what, let's go ahead and just put the whole can of that in with the diced tomatoes. Now, you don't have to do this. I mean, not everybody has one of these, but... You could just buy the can of tomato sauce and one can of the diced tomatoes and get the same result. So let's mix this up. It smells amazing. Now taste, you're gonna have to taste it to see how it tastes to you guys. If you need to add something, if you don't, I'm gonna go ahead and taste. It tastes amazing, but it needs more salt. I'm gonna just put a little bit of that and I'm gonna add some of the I need to get some more of this, some sea salt. 
All right, let's mix that up. Taste again. Much better. And yes, I'm double dipping. It's just me and my husband, seriously. I have my container of sauerkraut. Oh, I love sauerkraut. All right, let's start off this way. Now you wanna start at the back where the stem is and roll forward that way. Now I have these big scoops that I use when I do my catering. You can just use a regular spoon. I'm just gonna do a big old scoop Plop that right in there, kind of shape it out a little bit, kind of elongated like this. We're going to take that and we're just going to roll. Roll it like you would a burrito. I'm going to roll it and set it right here. you saw I ended up with eight rolls now what I ended up doing is I ended up pulling two more leaves off of this and I got two smaller ones toward the end I did not want to use these pieces these are super fibrous and hard to eat so I went ahead and peeled two more leaves off of that and ended up with eight rolls so let's get to putting this all together I have my sauce right here I'm going to put some in the bottom of my pan. This point forward, you guys, you will see a different pan because these eight would not fit in this one. So I ended up changing the uh, pan size. Let's redo this. Here we go. And even though this one was a much tighter fit, I could only put seven of the eight in here. I'm glad I changed because in the end it did spill over. So be sure to put a sheet tray under your pan when you're baking them. I ultimately ended up putting the last one in this medium size ramekin dish that I have and just place it on the sheet tray with the bigger pan. Let's go ahead and coat the top. This smells so good. All right, I have to be very careful that I don't overflow this. Okay. Get some of your sauerkraut. Squeeze a lot of the juice out because you really don't want this to be super juicy. I'm going to put the sauerkraut on the top. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to need to get more sauerkraut. Great probiotic, guys, too. Great probiotic. Oh, I forgot this little guy. Maybe I can get, maybe I can get enough. Oh, yeah. Woo! Squirt. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and just finish off what's left in the bowl here. Waste not, want not. That worked out pretty good. Worked out pretty good. All right. Now we're going to cover this. I'll go ahead and set this one aside. I don't want to bake that one right now, but we'll go ahead and stick this in the oven for about an hour. I think we'll be plenty enough time. Uh, close to the bottom and I'll be back in when they're done well here it is and it's still steamy so I'll go ahead and 
post a quick picture of what it looked like when it came out of the oven. About an hour in, I took the cover off. I added what little bit of Parmesan cheese I had left in this package and some of the shaved Parmesan cheese that I just kind of crumbled over the top. Left it in there for another 30 minutes, then hit the top with the broiler for about three to four minutes. I actually like some crushed peppers on mine. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of them on. I cut it open to let some of the steam out. I also like to add some Texas peat. All right, let's give her a little whirl here. All right, let me cut. This is gonna be crazy hot, you guys. It smell, if you could just smell my house right now, it smells amazing. I have let this set for a little bit because it's so hot. Oh, it still is hot. Mm. The meat is in there somewhere. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> shop towels that I use for my cast iron because they are lintless. <laughs> mm. Here's a picture of the meat inside. That was really good. Really good. I could use a little bit more salt, but when you include all the ingredients, the salt that I used really, it wasn't a lot. So good, you guys. And with the Texas peat, just puts a nice little heat to it. And the sauerkraut gives it a nice tang, along with the Texas peat. So, very good stuff, you guys. It's good. So, hopefully the cabbage won't bloat me. But, all in all, it took about from prep time to the end time about two hours give or take if you decide not to um, use the canned tomatoes and just use a like a marinara or a spaghetti sauce a little less time so that'll do it for today guys I will see you next week when I come in with a review and let me show you what the review is so I saw the keto twins Emily and Sarah do this review of this and I had to jump on it it's pricey it's pricey but it's hard to find at my Aldi's the bread sometimes it's there sometimes it's not this you had to buy in three loaves and it's called Franz keto white bread the slices are thin I've already tried it I do like it looks like I got some stuff in my hair uh, I do like it I do want to do a blood sugar test on it to see how it affects me the counts are for one slice 40 calories 1.5 grams of total fat uh, 12 grams of carbohydrates 12 grams of dietary fiber so zero net carbs so if you're counting net carbs it's great no added sugars, no total sugars, soluble, insoluble fiber. Uh, soluble fiber is two grams, insoluble fiber is 10, which gives you your 12 grams. So hopefully this will show up. All right guys, I'm going to enjoy this piece of stuffed cabbage. If you wanna try the video, go ahead, uh, try the video. <laughs> try the recipe, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to give macros for this because it will always depend on what you use for your sauce, what you use for your hamburger, what you use for your seasonings. If you decide to use um, the cauliflower or nothing at all, it just depends. So um, if you do, do do it this way, then you could go ahead and calculate the amounts that you use. But this is it for me, guys. So 
I will see you next week.